Hi everyone, welcome to Interview Pro. In the last video, we learned how to create a composite action. It was a simple composite action where we had just two steps, set up uh, Node.js and set up Python. Uh, but it didn't have any inputs or outputs. In this video, let's see how you can pass inputs and uh, get the outputs from the composite actions. My composite action is uh, going to set up the environment to start the build process. Um, what my composite action has to do is uh, it has to accept the versions of the dependencies that it has to install and it has to output the variables that the build workflows are going to use. So let me create a new repository. I'll call this um, setup build environment. Let me keep this private and add a readme file. As we know that if it's a separate repository, we need a file called action.yml. And I'll add the name setup build environment. This is going to accept inputs. So previously we saw we had uh, another composite action called install node.js. If I open this, we had two steps, set up node.js and set up Python. Here we were uh, installing 3.x and 18.x, but I want to provide an option to uh, let me actually copy this whole uh, workflow except the name sorry whole action so here this workflow is going to accept the versions of python and node.js i do not always want to install the same version because one of my workflows may need 3.8 and the other workflows might need 3.10 so i want to pass the uh, version explicitly so what I'll do is uh, I'll use the keyword inputs, then I'll start giving my uh, inputs. My input name is uh, Python version. I'll give a description about it. Version of Python. And is this required? Yes, this is required. And if there is any default value, the default value is 3.x. Unlike inputs to workflows, we do not have uh, uh, data types to actions. By default, it is string. So my other input is Node.js version. Let me copy paste and update this to Node.js and version of node.js by default it is going to install 18.x if you do not provide any value actually let me make this uh, false if you don't specify this required keyword it will assume it is non-required uh, input now once this workflow has installed everything i want this workflow to return few variables so that the I want this action to return this a uh, few variables that the calling workflow can use. So variables run and I have two to three lines of scripts. So I'm using the uh, this pipe to write multiple scripts, multiple lines of scripts. So I want to pass repository owner. And we know that there is a default uh, environment variable called github.repository owner, repository underscore owner. I want this to be a GitHub output. I'll copy paste and let's say um, we want the default branch on which the build and deployment should take place. So in my case, the default branch is main branch. If it's a master branch, then you can uh, name it master branch. Uh, then um, 
uh, let's say you have some CI CD key. In my case, it's um, interview pro CI CD key, let's say something like that. So I have three outputs here. I have set these outputs in this step. Now I have to export these outputs from action to uh, so that other workflows can access them. So what I'll do is there's a keyword called outputs. Just like how we declared inputs, we declared outputs. So you can give any name to your output. I'll say repo owner. Description is repository owner and the value is um, where do I get this repo owner value? It's from this step. We have an output. In order to identify this step, we need an ID. Just like how we accessed outputs from a regular workflow step, exactly the same thing. So I'll say VARS. So in order to access the output called repository owner, first I have to identify the step. So steps dot vars dot outputs dot repository owner. What we are saying here is this action has steps and there is a specific step called vars and this vars is setting few outputs and the output that I want to access is repository owner. Let me do the same thing for other outputs. The other output is default branch default branch and update the description to default branch and the name of the variable copy and paste it again to access the CICD key. So in this case it's CICD key and update the name of the output to CICD key. So we have inputs which uh, accept the versions of the Python and Node.js to be installed and we have outputs where we have three variables. So now let's commit the change and try to access these outputs in the build Angular app. So let me uh, let me go to the code and open build angular.yml file. So here previously we had installed Python and Node.js. Now I don't want to use this. So what I'll do is um, set up build environment. Uh, now the repository owner is same, but the repository name is uh, set up build environment. So here I'll use setup built environment. So previously we used branch, but this time let me create a tag. So here I'll go to tag and create a new release. I'll name the tag as v1. We don't have the tag yet, so I'll create it when I publish this release. I'll name the release name as v1 and I'll call it initial commit. So here I'll publish the release. So this release, we can use it here instead of main branch. What's the benefit of using the release is if there is any change after this uh, release in the main branch, it doesn't affect this workflow. We'll see that first. Let's see if this works or not. So here we have two inputs and they are optional. If you don't provide it, they'll accept a 3.x and 18.x. But in this case, I want to provide the inputs. So let me go and uh, see what the input names are. So Python version, I want to give it as uh, 3.10. And then we have Node.js version. I want to give it as 18 dot. Um, let me actually check what is the Node.js versions. So we have uh, 18 dot 20 dot 4. So let's try that. 
18.20.4. Um, so this step will give us few outputs, right? So in order to access these outputs in the next step, I'll simply log these uh, outputs just to show that the outputs are accessible. Outputs from action and let's print it. So echo. To identify the outputs from this step, we have to identify the step first. So I'll call this vars. You can give any uh, name or I'll say setup build env. I'll use this name echo. Um, so first I want to see repository owner which is steps dot set build environment dot outputs dot repo owner. So this is nothing but this variable name. Repo owner. Let me do the same thing for other variables as well. So the other variable is default branch. Let me copy and paste it here. default branch and the last one is uh, CI CD key now let's commit these changes and see if it is working so it has a push event so it should start running the workflow yes we see a new workflow triggered Okay, here we have to give the permissions. Um, we saw that in our last video because this is a private repository and the calling workflow is also in the private repository. Give this permission. Now it should work. Let me rerun the job. This workflow failed. It says required property is missing shell. Okay, so there's one thing to remember. When it comes to the steps of a workflow, we do not need to specify shell explicitly. It's not mandatory. But when it comes to the steps of a composite action, then it's a required fail. We have to specify the shell though it takes the default bash. In Ubuntu machines we have to specify the shell. So in this case I am using a Ubuntu machine so I want to specify bash shell here. If you are running a PowerShell uh, script then you can uh, say pwsh or PowerShell. So in my case it's a bash uh, script so I'll use bash. I'll commit the change. Now, uh, because we are using the version, even though I added, uh, uh, let me go back and go to tags. So this version is based on the commit CE48BC, but the latest commit is 44FA6C5. So because we are using the version V1, it doesn't affect this workflow. We will still see the error. So if I rerun this, it won't take that change. As expected, this workflow failed again with the same error. Now let me go here and uh, create a new release. So I'll say draft a new release. I'll create another tag V2 and V2 added shell now if I go to my workflow and use the new version build angular.yml and update the version to v2 commit the change We see a new workflow triggered and this should run. 
now we see that the action is successfully downloaded so first it downloads the uh, repository with version v2 and then it tries to execute those steps uh, so set up build environment has executed successfully but we have an error uh, in the outputs from main action so here it says uh, unexpected end of file while looking for matching double quotes so we might be missing uh, double quotes so let me go to the workflow edit it so I did not close double quotes here added quotes and commit the change view runs now we see the outputs from action so interview pro org main branch and interview pro ci cd so this is how you can provide inputs and outputs to the composite action also you can maintain versions so that um, your latest changes might not impact all the workflows that are using this action i hope the concept is clear if you like the content please like share and subscribe to interview pro thank you